Hey there guys, GamerDamage of one here, and today we are carrying on with um, the next episode of the Grand Tour Season 3, which is Well Aged Scotch, which I think is the 7th, yes, 7th episode. <sighs> Let's go. Forward it. Here we go. There we go. money. Bear with us on this one. You see, if you'd put £35,000 in a saving account in the year 2000, you'd now have around £60,000. However, if you'd put that same £35,000 into an E-Type Jaguar, you'd now have £100,000. Yeah, just about everything, even remotely rare or interesting, is worth a fortune these days. Aston Martin DB5, that'll cost you £750,000. Ferrari Daytona, £600,000. A Peugeot de Roux Mercedes SL, that'll set you back at least 75 grand now. Yeah, it's not just exotic cars either. Ford Escort Mexico, okay? Humdrum car. That's a £60,000 thing these days. Sixty yeah, grand. It is. However, Jeez. there are one or two rare and interesting cars that seem to have slipped through the net, whose prices haven't yet gone through the ceiling. So we decided to get out there and see which of us was best at spotting that investment opportunity. Exactly. So we each bought a classic car. And then to see which one of us had got the best deal, we took the grand tour to what one of our producers, who's Scottish, always says is the best, most beautiful place on earth. Scotland. We chose for our meeting point a quaint fishing port near Inverness. And I was the first to arrive in an Alfa Romeo GTV6. Now, you would imagine that when one of these comes onto the market, classic car enthusiasts are running around like they're in a zombie movie, and it's Black Friday. But no, I bought this from an 83-year-old man who'd had it since new and was only selling it because his 84-year-old wife found it so difficult to get in and out of, you know. It's only done 26,000 miles, and yet it cost £10,000. And £10,000, that's a round of drinks in the world where this sort of thing belongs. Oh, hello. James May in a Lancia Gamma Coupe. It's one of the prettiest cars ever made, but don't tell him I said that. Morning, May. How much? Thirteen and a half thousand pounds. Oh, so three and a half thousand pounds more than I paid for this vastly superior Alfa Romeo. Well, thirteen and a half thousand pounds is a bargain for a car that is coach built and extremely rare and beautiful. But it isn't exotic like this is. What do you mean it's not exotic? That is a better looking car. Well, look at this. Yes. It is superb. It's not superb. I tell you what's not superb. Richard Hammond arriving in a Fiat X19. How much? Two thousand two hundred and fifty pounds. 
Somebody saw you coming, Hammond. <laughs> what? A baby Ferrari? 2000. Did you just call it a baby Ferrari? He did. Yes, because it is mid engine Italian. That's exactly what it is. Well, listen to that sound. I know. That is the reassuring sound of tin on Russian steel. It's a light, bright, effervescent sound, just like the car. How many colours has this car been? <laughs> it was black, then it was red, then it was white, then it was pale blue, and now it's purple. I'd like to add, actually, it's not how many colours has this car been. How many cars has this been? Well, quite. It's now going brown. Brown, yeah. All right, then, I'm not going to turn around and try and work out which Alpha you bought. -da, the best Alpha. Oh, it's a GTV6. Exactly. Yep. Why has it got this plastic bit in the middle of the bonnet? Genius. The engine in this car had a small issue. It used to backfire, well, front fire, actually, and blow the top off the engine, yeah? So that would damage the bonnet. So they put this plastic panel, which was easier to replace. Why didn't they stop it backfiring? Oh, don't be ridiculous. They were busy. Lazy. Yes, let's not get bogged down with some of the Alphas' minor designer flaws. Disaster. Because all three of us have got classic cars. I have, yes. For good money. Mm -hmm. We're in Scotland, so why don't we take them on a drive in... Well, let's be honest, Scotland is just a road trip. Well, I agree. We could, while we're here, we could do the NC500. Which, I mean, that is supposed... It's voted by Condé Nast Traveller magazine, voted it the best road trip in the world. Locks, mountains, it's just... All the oh, pretty it's, bits, I mean, yeah. No, it's all the best bits of Scotland, right? Yeah. 500 miles round the north coast of Scotland. In Italian, exotic that cars. Be, oh, hang on. Box. Text. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Wilman. Mr. Wilman. Yeah. It says those cars will not do 500 yards, leave alone 500 miles. So I provided three backup vehicles which you can use to get home when they go wrong and catch fire and explode. I was wondering what they were. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, actually, because Hammond's only just suggested it. Eventually, we cleared the fishing port and found ourselves on the open road where we could oh, get down to the business of enjoying our pedigree Italian classics. Oh, God. It looks better already. <laughs> Just so refined and sophisticated, and in fact, really well looked after by its previous owner. It was obviously love, and it. One of my wipers just fell off. <laughs> Lancia, living up to his name. You just have to drive like that. James, can I just say he's done three miles? <laughs> it's mended for now. Don't it turn it on again. Just turn it on. I want to see what happens. Right, okay. You ready? 
in Scotland. In Scotland, you won't make it. That's the thing. Perfect. Oh God. Meanwhile, in the GTB6. Oh no, what's that? That third, my good third. Trump your foot down, Jeremy. <laughs> I do quite like this car though. Um, the GTV6 is quite a handsome car. You know, considering it's from the like 80s and 90s, it is quite a good looking car and still holds up. Love to see one that can do 140 miles an hour. Despite all the weirdness, I do still absolutely love this thing. It was my ownership of a GTV6 that taught me what cars are all about. You need a personality, you need flaws for them to be human. And James May was right for the first time in his life, and only time in his life. This is one of the greatest engines ever made. The creamiest, the smoothest, and the most beautiful to listen to. That's not exhaust noise. That's an actual engine. As James and I enjoyed our classic thoroughbreds, Richard was driving along in his purple Fiat. Unleash 80 horsepower. Oh, God. Complaint about the fear that pedals are very, very small and very close together. And if you try and operate them with, let's say, your feet, you'll find that the feet are too big. Really, you just need to use a toe on each.
Soon, Hammond spotted a racetrack and suggested we have a go on it. And as we pulled up, it became clear that tiny pedals weren't his only problem. That's quite high revs. Yeah, idle's quite high, yeah. Is that its idle speed? Yes. It's keen. Since this was actually a go-kart track, it was too narrow for car racing. So I decided we should have a drifting competition. Oh, well. That's going to work well in three front-wheel drive cars, though, isn't it? It doesn't work. It simply doesn't really have the power to throw its tail out properly. And it's Even though drive. my Alpha had twice the horsepower of the Fiat, things weren't great for me either. Just grip and more grip. I know Roger Moore drifted a GTV6 in Octopussy, but then he crashed into a fence and had to dress up as a clown. In the Gamma, I was confident I'd succeed where my colleagues had failed. Right, here we go. Lancer is one of the greatest names in rallying history. So, control drift should be second nature to this. As I approach that corner, I'll uh, heel and tow it and... Hmm. <laughs> Brake lift off. At this point, I suddenly remembered something important. This is front-wheel drive, isn't it? What was I thinking of? It's not going to drift. Happily, yeah. though, the enthralled local audience were able to find a solution. What I do is I take the rear wheels off, let the tyres down, and put these plastic covers on, then pump the tyres back up again, put them back on. That gives the car the loose back end you want to drift. These are just... This is like putting insulating tape on the back wheels of your scale electric cars. Stand by. With no help from anyone else on this freezing day, the drift covers were soon fitted. Oh, here we go. Oh! It's a right horrible turn. noise. Get the drift going and there's... <laughs> this entertainment went on for quite some time. Gonna retry that. <laughs> Just trying to get you feel for it. But let's go. Right. Easy. Oh, 
like a lot of fun. We're going to do that. We're going to try it. You, oh, they, there's the only set. What are those things? Yeah, they're the only set, so we can't do it. Well, no, we, we can make some. We <laughs> <laughs> can borrow this bit. No, but they won't need it. This goes over. Really just yes, drifted perfectly behind you. This is another of those weird days. <laughs> the made. Hammond decided not to hold back. Oh god. Oh, this is gonna be. I mean, seriously, he's gonna get to that corner and then. Where can the helicopter land? <laughs> oh God! That's uh, that's a nice old place. Try again. Right, one of, oh, that's fallen off. That could be interesting. And I am turning in. Drifting. Oh no, I'm no, there's I've got no steering. Annoyingly, Hammond's dismal failure didn't stop him fitting his ridiculous contraptions to my precious alpha. And insisting that I have a go. Think of the trouble Alfa Romeo went to to make this car exquisite. Think of the trouble the Pirelli went to to make the tires grip properly. And then along comes Hammond with the bin. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ow, God, that looks tricky. Okay. Oh, 
chicken. What? Make the tires grip properly. And then along comes Hammond with the spin. Massive vibration. Hammond, you blithering idiot! You've totally ruined this car! An inspection of the undersides revealed some grim news. That has come off. So the prop shaft is now, well, it's still joining the gearbox or the transaxle to the mm -hmm. engine, but by a thread. And if I did anything more than rub it like that, it's going to come off. If I'm driving along, and that's the end of the Alpha. Well, that's interesting. Uh, my car's working and I'd like a drink. Uh, the hotel is about 25 miles away, so I think I'll get on with it, if you don't mind. You can't leave... No, you can't leave me now. What do you mean I can't leave you now? Well, it's... Have you seen... Have you seen how cold it is? I can't see how cold it is, but no, I No, but I've got, I actually just looked. In the Drizzle six feels like two. Well, you know what would warm you up? What? A bicycle ride. It always does. <laughs> Freezing 
middle of nowhere. Hey, Richard, the hamster Hammond. Is your car warm and dry? I'm just checking. Yeah, I'm warm and dry. You warm and dry? I'm very warm and dry. <sighs> Oh, I meant to ask, would you like a long gin and tonic sitting at a bar stool? Yes, yes I would, and we've only got, well, it's not far, in a car. Oh, God. Oh, come on! Rub it in! Seriously, rub it in! to rehearse it. What? Well, what we say. When he's found, look. So we're on Breakfast TV, you're on the sofa, yeah? Oh, okay, okay. okay. Uh, good morning, with me now is James May, so to speak, who um, has just learnt of the sad demise of his co-host and colleague, Mr. Jeremy Clarkson. James, how do you feel that his body was found in a ditch with a bicycle this morning? Was it? Yes. No, that's not right, is it? No. Sorry, can we do that again? James, this is radio, okay? Good morning, five past nine. James May is with us. Uh, we only learnt this morning of the sad demise of... Oh, bugger. What? <laughs> All of that rehearsing, mate. Waste of time. Oh. Because he's outside right now, fighting with the bicycle lock by a fence. Oh, you look cold. Who is cold? Oh, you know, why, why won't this work? Paper boys can work one of those, mate. Oh, see, I don't care. He's left the key in it. What yes. a bit. Hammond! 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 <laughs> <laughs> this morning, the peaceful stillness was shattered by the cry of a distressed animal. Clarkson! Clarkson! Where's my roof? Right. What's that? What? Oh, you are joking. No, no, no. He hasn't. He's not that sick. Morning. What? Morning. Yeah, whatever. Oh. <laughs> Why have you driven over your own roof? <laughs> He's sick. <laughs> Enjoy your day on your bicycle, bastard. <laughs> well, I'm cold now, obviously. Borrowed a jacket from a cameraman. He's six three and eighteen stone. <laughs> I'm in a small, stylish Italian sports car. Supposed to be looking good. I look like a frostbitten gnome. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't stand for it. If anything that worries me is he might get some exercise on his bicycle. <laughs> Do you think he's already just become one of those embittered cyclists who hates anybody who's got a car? Oh, jeez. What? Oh, come on! <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Oh, I say that's rather good. It's two. Ooh. He did not mend that. Very good. Now, I have to say, the only reason...
reason why we met on a beach full of oil rigs and then drove through a council estate full of hypodermic needles uh, is to annoy, well, simply and only to annoy our Scottish producer. Yes, but, but we will not tell you Gav's name, we promise. No, we won't, we won't say his name. Uh, anyway, look, it all gets a lot sunnier and prettier in part two uh, when we finally get on the North Coast 500, and we'll pick that up later on. Uh, I want to talk about the BMW M5, which has always been, as I'm sure we all know in here, the ultimate cue car. It is a fizzing lunatic in a Geoffrey Chaucer suit. However, the new M5 has turbocharging, so it's kind to polar bears, and it has four-wheel drive, so it's safe, and it has an auto... Let's do uh... Oh, crap. Let me, first of all, explain the basic recipe for a BMW M5. It's a four-door saloon with a boot at the back, space for five businessmen in the middle, and a monstrously powerful engine at the front. That's the main it thing looks amazing about an M5. As well. It must be extremely fast. <laughs> On the face of it, then, the new version seems to tick all the important M5 boxes. It's sensible, and thanks to 592 horsepower, it is Ferrari fast. But what about the turbochargers and the automatic gearbox? And what about the all-wheel drive system? Does all that mean it's no longer capable of being a swivel-eyed lunatic? No, not really. If you want it to do this all the time, you can actually turn off the four-wheel drive system. Seriously, you can turn it off. Just have it in rear drive only. Behave like a complete yobbo. Yeah! <laughs> and that's just the start of the M5's adaptability. You can choose how much traction control you'd like. You can choose how sporty and responsive you want the engine to be, how uncomfortable you'd like the ride to be, how meaty you'd like the steering to be, how quickly you want it to change gear, and what you want on the head-up display. You can even choose what sort of noise you want the exhausts to make. Oh, and look at this one. This menu allows me to choose what fragrance comes out of the air conditioning vent. I can have the Blue Sweet, which is a waft of pure watered pearls, or I can have this one, which gives me a golden shower of fiery aromas. And this is all very Pacific Rim, it's very CGI, and that's great. But the truth of the matter is that the 50-something businessmen who buy this car will never change the fragrance setting or any of the other stuff. He'll put it in four-wheel drive comfort mode on day one and leave it there forever. And if he's going to do that, there may be a better alternative. It's made by a German tuning company called Alpina. 
and it's another take on what a fast BMW should be like. It actually produces 600 horsepower. That's more than you get from the M5. It has more torque, too. And there's no nanny limiter. So this will do 205 miles an hour. Wow. Does this mean, then, that on a track, the comfort wagon can keep up with the ultimate sports salute? This car was not developed to race track. The boss of Alpina says if you engineer a car to be good at the Nürburgring, it won't be any good on the road. And he may have a point on that. It actually produces 600 horsepower. That's more than you get from the M5. It has more torque, too. And there's no nanny limiter. So this will do 205 miles an hour. Quarter, more nailed down, more on it somehow. So, on a track, make no mistake, the M5 will pull away. In fact, it is doing it. We're both cats, it's just that he's a cheater and I'm a lion. If then you care about shaving tenths of a second off your lap time at a racetrack, you're better off with an M5. But for going home on the M4 in the real world, which is what I'm about to do, I'd rather use the Alpina. So I shall. Very interesting, interesting observation. So, um... So after all of that, you would have the worst car. Well, yes, because it's better. It sounds better to me, I've got to say. Oh, well, it says the voice of speed. Well, I'll tell you what, let's find out how fast the M5 goes round the Ebola drone. Here we go. <sighs> go, 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 go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Flying onto the straight there. Well, look, it's big gap.
I reckon I can shave that off. So try the M5 goes round the Ebola drone. Come on. Go, go, go. So let's see where the new one goes. Is it quicker? Oh, it is. Yes. Uh, oh, my word. Four seconds faster. That's staggering, isn't it? That's that is absolutely, absolutely amazing. Now, and I have to say, um, we, did, um, we did time the Alpina, but we haven't, uh, we haven't filmed it. Why not? Well, because it's going to be slower. <laughs> you, are, you are going to look such an arse if it is. <laughs> find out let's see where it goes this is the alpina there you go you see slower as i said but 121.6 not bad. not bad so if you do want a taut fast super saloon his advice is get the flabbier slower one yeah, it's better it's really some clear buying advice again this week it is anyway let's get on to some actual <laughs> clear buying advice though, shall we let's get back to our film in scotland tonight we are doing uh, a tour of the north coast 500 around the top of scotland in some beautiful Italian classic cars and a Fiat X19. Well, yes, but you two had both had mechanical issues. Yes. Yeah, we, we did, but we still had hope in our hearts that things would get better. As we cruised along, our Italian classics and the Fiat continued to provide unexpected entertainment. I'm going to show you a fantastic feature on this car. Here are the heating and ventilation controls. I've got it on warm because it's a cold day. But look what happens when I press the air conditioning button. It's haunted! Did you see that? Look. Hmm, I think I'll cool myself down. <laughs> wow. My head itches because of this hat. But if I take it off, I'll freeze to death. Soon, Hammond insisted we stop for a cup of tea to ward off his hypothermia. I've had a thought. That's very uncharacteristic. No, I was going to say, this first time No, this is based on experience and knowledge. Right, problem with the NC500 is all the way around here. We miss this bit. We're here, right, and we miss this road, which I have driven, and it is breathtaking. Not just the scenery, which is incredible, but the actual road itself. I'm sorry, but if we just go along here... Yeah. We're not exactly doing the NC500, are we? No, but what if we create our own route and claim it for the Grand Tour? We could call that the Scottish Highlands Intermediate Tour. How far is it? Uh, it's about 287 miles. If we start. Scottish Highlands Intermediate Tour 287, 287. It would be the... Sh no, hang on, that doesn't work, does it? Piloting extremely nicely in Scotland. 287. Yeah. So the piloting extremely nicely in Scotland, 207. That would do. You see, that's your second thought of the day. It's because of the hat. With the new route sorted out, we oh set God. off. And it turned out that it wasn't quite like Hammond had said. It was much, much better. Um, GTV6. Oh, 
Oh, yep, yep. Idiot. Hammond, you idiot. Get out the way. Jesus Christ. Get out the way, would you? Jesus Christ, man. Holy Two Lord. more scenes left. Beautiful. I mean, it's it, this is heaven. In fact, the moment was so magical, it had taken my mind off something that had been troubling me all day. Today is the 11th of April, and I don't want to sound like Eeyore, but it's my birthday, and those two haven't remembered. have said happy birthday. The director said happy birthday. James and Richard, nothing. Ollapool, 26 miles. Ollapool, I might be able to get the prop shaft balance there. That's quite a big town. Guys, how far are we from the hotel now, do you know? About 30 miles, 35. Well, as it's not late, I'm going to dive into Olipool and see if I can get my prop shaft balanced. You know what? It's vibrating and it will hurt the car, so I want to just get it balanced up and I'll see you at the hotel later on. That is uncharacteristically conscientious of Jeremy to want to go and mend his car, but it's actually very convenient for me and Hammond. We've got something in mind. The thing is, we hadn't forgotten it was his birthday, and with him gone, we could shoot ahead and set up his surprise party. The loon's coming in. Oh, this is nice. All right. Loosen it off. And that will allow the prop shaft to settle where it wants to settle. While the short-sighted orangutan ruined his car, I was busy in the kitchen. For Jeremy's birthday feast, I am preparing his favorite dish, spaghetti bolognese. But, as it's his birthday and as we are here, I'm going to give it a Scottish twist. Yes, I am doing that. I'd say that is ready. Oh, yeah. That will do nicely. And there it is. Spaghetti McFarland's. Richard was battering and deep-frying everything in sight. 
In you go, my wee beauties. I was organizing yeah. the guests, who are now all here and waiting for the birthday boy. Oh, oh, hello, here it is. Here it is. Oh. Kuntash. Well, it's here 8.32. There's obviously some kind of classic car meeting going on. Oh, wait a minute. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. You remembered? Of course we remembered. Actually, it's better than that. We're having a party for you. No, but James. There's a classic car meet going on. No, they're your guests. For your birthday party. Oh. Oh. Still, it could be worse. And then it was, because it was time to sit down for Richard's Scottish dinner. Battered spag bowl, followed by a deep-fried cake. This is the worst birthday party I've ever had. Come on, we made an effort. Anyway, shall I get the bagpipes? <laughs> The next morning, God. we were up and on the road, bright and early. This is the first April the 12th since 1972 that I haven't had a hangover. Thanks to the world's worst party organizers, Messrs. May and Hammond. Oh no, the vibration is back. I do anything. <laughs> but despite my problems, the sun was shining, and Scotland was more spectacular than ever. Last scene, let's go. Go away. I'm actually gonna take Richards this time. Go. Because apparently it's incredibly fast. Go. Oh, Jesus Christ.
are now only 50 miles to go to the finish point on our loop. So it felt like a good time to sum up our wonderful cars and Richard's fears. Some cars achieve classic status because they're rare, they're thoroughbreds, like those two. And with that, you have to accept they'll be delicate, temperamental. Some cars achieve classic status simply because they're really good. The X19 was good when it was designed and built first, and still is today. Add to that that it cost me just over £2,000. Rare, interesting, beautiful. Those are the criteria by which I think you should judge whether or not a car is a true classic. It has to be at least two of those things to qualify. So let's have a look at Melance here. Well, it's definitely beautiful. It's a truly superb bit of car styling, this. And it's rare. Look at it. And tell me you can think of another car anywhere on earth for 10 grand that you'd like more than this. Ford Sierra Cosworth. Bidding a fond farewell to Hammond's magnificent penis, we got back to the town where we'd started, Inverness. Mission accomplished. Well, there we are. In just three days, we have covered a staggering 287 miles. Oh, well, yours was on an AA truck for a bit of it. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But apart from one catastrophic failure that required somebody to drive from Swindon in Wiltshire all the way to Inverness with a spare part, don't forget that my windscreen wiper fell off as well. Yeah, and one of my headlamps is stuck. Yeah, but apart from those things, we have proved that it is still possible to buy and enjoy a classic car, even if you're quite poor. Yeah, we should be proud of that. Yeah, yeah we, we should. should. Yeah. And with that, back to the studio. Tent. 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 Because we're quite poor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? It's funny, over the years we have travelled the whole world looking for the best driving roads. Yeah. And it turns out it was just next door all along. I have to say, I don't want to say this in front of our Scottish producer. Do not name Gavin Whitehead. No, I, I shan't. But that was just about the best drive I've ever had. That road, that scenery, that alpha. That party. No, not the party. But everything else was... Well, it was perfection. I do agree with you. I thought it was spectacular. But we should get back to the point of this film, which is that you can buy an affordable classic car that is also an investment. Are you sure you want to raise this particular point, James? Why don't you tell the ladies and gentlemen how it worked out with your last year? Well, OK, I spent £13,500 on the car, and when I got it home, I discovered that the price of putting it right was only £6,000. <laughs> so your investment has gone down by 45%. Correct. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, my alpha, as I said in the film, I have brought it home with me, and since we made that, which was April, so six months to nine months ago, uh, it's only cost £8,000. Wow. So, so your investment has gone down by 80%? Yes, what about you? 100%. <laughs> really? Yeah. Day after we finished filming, the engine blew, car in the bin, all gone. <laughs> so to conclude then, all of us have lost some money and one of us has lost all of it. Yes, exactly. Yes, and right. on that terrible disappointment, it is time to end. I'm going home now, in my alpha for a moment. No, you're not. <laughs> We live over there. Yeah, we know. Yeah, exactly. Too far. <laughs> Whatever. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time. Bye. Well, that's it for episode seven of season three. Um, the next part is going to be um. Oh God. International Buffoons Vacation. Yeah, sounds about right. Anyway, I've been Gamer Jamie Triple One, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye.